did have a question. Uh, with such uh, neg negativity toward uh, homosexuality coming from a lot of Christians, uh, is it possible to reach out to the, to the homosexual population? And how do we do that? That's a beautiful question. It really is. I'm going to ask you uh, to put these three words together in sequence. Believe, behave, belong. And if you put them in a circle, it's easier. Be, believe, behave, belong. I know a number of gay people who are dying inside because they're gay. I'm not going to decide whether it's genetic or they were hurt as a child. I, I'm not going to go down that debate. I'm just going to hear their cry, we don't belong. And I'm asking right now a real deep question as a district president facing this in Calabata, Hawaii. And that is, where did Jesus start? I honestly think he put belong at the front. And he let people belong to him without condition. He ate with sinners. What's that all about? They didn't believe he was Messiah yet. And they surely weren't behaving. But they were belonging to the Messiah. And the church of its day was saying, they don't believe the way we do, or at least they're not behaving, so why are you belonging to them? That was the Pharisees' question. Why are you belonging to them? And he wanted to start with belong, and then out of that relationship of you are love, no condition. You are love, let's walk together. And out of that arena begin to know Messiah came, believe, and then it starts shaping behavior. Now, you can say, well, what about the guy who was sleeping with his stepmother in Corinth? The issue there was not that he was simply sinning. The issue there was that they were teaching by that behavior that anything goes. In other words, they were compromising the word. That became a cancer inside the body because it was a new cross. It wasn't the cross of Jesus Christ. It was the cross of antinomianism. And, and so they were removing the heart of God rather than bringing the heart of God through Jesus Christ for sinners. You know, you can, do, you can do sinner two ways, either be forgiven or remove the law so there's no sin. Forgiveness is a very different enterprise. I'm asking the hard question, especially with the so-called gay or lesbian community. They will tell you we can never belong, and that's where the conversation stops. Because we don't believe yet, or we don't behave right. How Christian does someone need to be to meet Jesus. How Christian does somebody need to be to meet Jesus? For whom did it come? Here. I, I would just say, because uh, we, we definitely had this work in Tampa quite a bit uh, several years ago, um, there is a big difference between the homosexual agenda, the political folk, and then the people struggling in our neighborhoods and in our communities. And I would suggest that in a lot of these things, and I do a lot of city ministry where I disagree with the leaders that are in the community, but if you get past the leaders to the people, you find a lot of people are broken, they're struggling, whether it's heterosexuals who are struggling with sexual issues or homosexuals or any of these different things, and you bring the gospel to them the way you bring it to broken people. And what we found in Tampa when we did this was uh, as we reached out to the communities, because it was a big political issue back in the day when I was serving there, we found broken people who wanted new life in Jesus Christ. And they were struggling with their life. And so we entered into those worlds just like we enter into the worlds of our people who are heterosexual and struggling with things too, uh, with the good news of the gospel. And when you have forgiven sinners who finally join your church, forgiven sinners who are now struggling with the sin that they're uh, forgiven from, you receive them the same way you receive anybody else. Uh, and we don't let the agendas of any of these folks determine that process. But get past those political folks, get past those so-called community leaders, and you'll find broken people who are yearning to hear the good news of the gospel. And repentance will come with that too. We, we don't yet know how to work with this. I'm actually working with a couple of congregations in my district over this particular issue. They're in, in communities that are population-wise, a um, much larger percentage of gays or lesbian people. And, and they don't know yet how to be a congregation within them. They're, they're stumbling. 
they're stumbling. Either they want to say, Oops, we've got to get these people changed to join us, or we really just have to reinterpret the scriptures, as I think has happened in the ELCA, uh, to, to be welcoming. The answer is not in either place. But to get there is a tremendous challenge. And it's going to take a lot of humility and wisdom under the spirit to see what our God is saying, digging deeper into the heart of God. And I'm wanting our congregation to be able to look at this and be truly redemptive communities. Christ's true presence, his true presence in our place. And that doesn't mean all his body and his blood. What you told us today, which was, I never saw it before. Give your body. Oh, that's what God did. He, he took a body and then gave it. So what are you saying to us about how to intersect? Remember, Jesus left the church to come to the end church, remember? He left heaven. He didn't come to the church. He came onto his own and his own received him none. That was a choice he made. He really is the great missionary of God, the great permeator of a broken world. And if we're his body, then we are doing the same. It's a great challenge, and it's going to demand a lot more serious thinking and humility on our parts to get there. And let me just say this. When, when we say no, when we say that no, that practice is destructive to your life, when we say that, you're saying it for their sake, not for yours. And that's something we really have to work on, because a lot of times we love to say no for our sake. But in reality, what we're saying, because this is what they told us when we started serving in Tampa, they said, Pastor, keep saying no, because that means there's a different yes out there for me than this lifestyle. And so he was actually encouraging us to do that. But he said, but say no in ways that we can understand you're saying for our benefit, for our blessing, so that that yes can come in in a, in a full way. So I think that's, you know, it's still tough work. Be with a simple folk, no matter who they are, it's tough work. The Dr. Phil question is one of the most wonderful evangelism questions. How's that working for you? <laughs> I'm serious. It's a great evangelism question. How's it working? 